Wiring Day Part 2. Happy Monday. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, nice day today, at least afternoon. It cleared up and was very comfortable, about 70 degrees. Got a beautiful sunset if I wanted to climb up on the roof, which I don't. We're going to talk in here for a minute instead. Uh, today we finished, I think, the wiring on this car. Lots of wiring in the DME box, chasing stuff down below. Uh, some extension wires, crimps. Uh, etc. This is the prettiest DME box I've been able to come up with yet. And I'm rather proud of this. Less time and it looks way better. That seems to be completely wired for manual. There's no way around having terminal connectors here unless you replace the entire loom, which no one would want to do based on cost alone, if it's even available. So uh, after that, it wouldn't start. It just cranked, said terminal 87. I followed the uh, job procedure in ISTA to pull the main DME relay, check the resistance between two of the contacts. That wasn't the problem, but seemingly reseated, reseating the relay fixed that problem. I was worried we had some loose wires. Now that I've totally cleaned up the DME box, let's see if it still starts and runs as well as it did before. We get a service indication because there's service due per CBS. It wants the clock set, which I'm not going to do. We're still in kilometers, which has to be programmed yet. I know that there's a headlight bulb out. That is pretty happy for wiring day. I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm also happy with this. This is our TPMS button. So as I press that now, that turns on MDM. I will press and hold. And there's the DSC off. So that is working properly. I certainly wish I could get one that said MDM instead of tire pressure, but the communication to and from the module is working. It's not complaining about the flat tire monitoring system. It's not even complaining about all the missing shit here in the center console. Uh, most notably the EDC button, which I believe will be this uh, panel right here. So lots and lots of progress today. This thing runs and sounds great. It does drive. We moved it around the shop a little bit. I'm not going to drive it very much or outside of the shop purely because we need those cooler lines on the transmission to block off the fill and drain ports. Uh, there was an incident in the cabinet. One of the shelves collapsed, so I had to take all this off. We will rebuild and fix the shelf tomorrow. Not a big deal, but that was pretty much the majority of the day. The fact that it's taking me longer, um, I mean, it's not. I, I did this in what would have been like three days before. We did it in one day today, but I'm walking Michael through everything with the hopes that he can kind of take over on the next one, and then maybe uh, I can fill in and ask and answer questions and whatnot. It's pretty complicated, but it is not rocket science, as everyone says. For anyone wondering, the main DME re relay is right here, the blue one. So if you ever have issues with that, be sure to check. And this light is so cool. I love that thing. In other news, the wheels for Sepang came back. A uh, customer wanted the outside of those wheels painted, or left, rather, the original silver, and then wanted the inside lines and the face to be black. So that's the new look. It's going to go back for touching up and uh, some improvements after he gets some miles on the car, but certainly a unique look. It's not really my style or my taste, but this isn't my car, and this... I mean, it does. it looks interesting. It really pulls out this flat facing area of the wheel and creates a lot of definition and contrast there. Um, so it, it's not terrible. I got to get a shift knob for this thing still. Um, really didn't have time to get to that today. We just need these transmission block off pipes. Then we can start doing some road testing and see if we have anything that comes up. But we're getting pretty decent at this. If we had all the parts in house, I think we could completely knock out a conversion within seven days. Good evening. 1110, something like that. I don't even know. Came back, had pizza. I took a shower, uh, watched some Fosters, been ordering parts online with Mike for the last hour, gearing up for the uh, next few days. Went through the toolkit here at the house, handpicked a few items that we're going to take up to the shop. This guy, Ball Peen Hammer, inherited this from my grandfather years ago. It is probably four times older than I am, four times my age, and it'll last forever. It's an old tool with no rust on it. It's been in a garage. It's been in a shed. It's been in a shop. It's just been everywhere. And it's fine. And what I find funny is if I go into my old handle land drawer here, this is a cobalt tool. That's Lowe's. I purchased this in maybe 2016. It's a pair of wire cutters. Take a look at the rust on that in five years. Five years rusty. 60 years, no problem. Old stuff lasts forever. I have a whole bunch of his older tools. I've got a half-inch drive uh, breaker bar. Things heavy as hell. 
It's got steps in it like this, so you can do a 45. There's the top, backwards 45. Just old tools, and they will last forever. Too bad they don't, they don't build them like they used to, and those old guys were right. So successful day all in all, wiring uh, the Canadian M5 today. It was a little painful getting stuff to work. So I put all the grounds together on the sensor system, but did not attach it to pin six on X60002 on the DME. Uh, because I thought, hey, maybe you don't have to. Well, I had a whole bunch of electrical codes, and it's like, shit, okay, I probably should. So I went out there, made the extra connection, got rid of those codes, and then I had a throttle actuator bank one code, which is weird because the engine was running fine. So on the DME, the two main blocks that go on to that, uh, they have these slider tabs that lock them down and cinch them on in the DME. I, have, Whenever I service these connectors, I take those off to work on them. Putting them back on seems to have solved the problem. So I'm wondering if when you really slide those things on and it pulls those things down all the way onto the DME, it just makes significantly better contact with the pins in the DME. That's probably the case. So if I had a few that didn't um, make a good connection, that would certainly explain random electrical issues that changed every time I reseated the connectors. So remember that if you're 